The world we live in is vast and diverse. Our planet Earth is beautiful. There are over 7 billion of us, people on it. We are all different in color of skin, in our religious beliefs and gender. We are adults and children. We are rich and poor. We are rulers and common folk. We shepherd flocks and sow grains. We send ships into space and conquer oceans. We climb to the tops and descend into the abyss. We get sick and suffer. We rejoice and win. But something unites us all despite our differences. We, the authors of this film, think that what unites us is a dream. Even the smallest are very cautious, or big and bright. Everyone has one, or has had at least when they were small. The main characters of our film are not people chosen randomly. When you want something very much in life, you find it. We would like to talk about what a dream is, and not just talk, but find answers to our questions. To learn how to realize a dream. And we met with these people. They don't just dream, they make their dreams come to pass in their lives. They are willing to share their knowledge and experience in making dreams real. They are Vitaly Sundakov, traveler, poet, a very rare person, because he teaches others what he lives and lives what he believes and declares. Not just what he is interested in, and the main thing, he's not afraid to live like this. Natalia Zotova, psychologist and lecturer of business seminars. This woman has lived through something incredible. At one point, her only dream was to survive, and she did, and says you can live with fears, you shouldn't be afraid, and should always believe in miracles. Mikhail Lahavitsky, author and host of Program Development, writer, a calm, bright, wise man. When you listen to him, you want to stop fussing about, stop looking back and doubting, but create, create, create. Robert Tuykin, family and child psychologist, author of the program, Robinson himself, and many other defining programs for kids and teenagers. He has accomplished everything he ever wanted as a child, and now can teach anyone how not to betray your child to dream. A dream is feeling the desire which makes life beautiful every day. A dream for me is something unimaginable that I believe can nevertheless happen in my life. A dream is something bright that ought to come to life. A dream is positive energy. It's an internal little engine that fills a person's life with movement. A path you choose to walk on. Something that seems first impossible. Life. It's the way. It's something that pushes us forward in life. It leads us, makes us get out of bed. It's something that guides me and inspires. Someone dreams of glory. Someone of a player. Someone of freedom. Someone is concerned about Schumacher. Someone about flu. Someone about the people. When I was little, I attempted to put together a list where I tried to note everything I ever wanted or was dreaming about. For example, to see an elephant, to ride a camel, to see northern lights, to see the sea, to learn to fight, play a guitar, so some sort of list materialized. I have forgotten about that list eventually, but came across it a certain number of years later. Naturally, all of these things have been experienced and done many times over. But what a wonderful coincidence. But it's not really a coincidence. It really was a result of subconscious programming, an affirmation and visualization of what you wanted to do that caused it to happen. My dreams surprised me. I started dreaming at first to survive. My biggest dream was to stay alive, and it seemed unattainable. But I've told you about my dreams now. There are a lot of them, and they're all different. I can create as many as possible. But the most important thing is to realize them. I dream that every person would be able to dream, and do it every day. And not just make up dreams every day, but make them come true. 
I dream that every person would accomplish at least five of their dreams, at the very minimum. For example, my dream is for people to open up their splendor, open up their inner beauty, and start living in that splendor. And I can imagine how the world would look where this is realized. And imagine people who've discovered and opened up their splendor and are connected to their beauty. How does the world function? When you are connected with your beauty, you begin to see beauty around you, in other people, in nature, in everything. And by the way, the moment you see the beauty of another person, you see that beauty as your own, as part of you, the part that is connected to it. I dreamt of being strong, of adventures, interesting things. There were even moments. It's just say, it wasn't like I wanted to become someone in particular. I was drawn by ideas and stories about polar explorers, how they lived there, how it was dourly. The idea of relationships there appealed to me. Can you imagine to live there and not get bored of each other? Sometimes I wanted to become a trucker, to drive around, see everything. I looked at those cars as if I was spellbound. All the time I thought for some reason, this wasn't for me. You know, for health reasons, as I am blind in one eye. And I was 31 when I suddenly started having doubts whether I should believe that all that is not for me. And then I got behind the wheel and I suddenly realized that there was a new grade of freedom. It allowed me to visit places with the family and kids that I only been able to go to alone previously. A dream is something from childhood. See Santa, become a fireman, eat 500 ice creams, win a fair fight between myself and Sergei from apartment 20, talk to Inna from school, become a doctor, see the sea, ride a horse, finish high school, get into college. If I get a promotion to manager's position, I'll get another loan, buy a better computer, a better car, go on holidays to Italy, or yet a holiday home in the countryside. The kids are growing up too. They need something as well. Stop, what happened? You dreamt of becoming a doctor. A child would say, I want to become a doctor. But you are so deep down and small and insignificant, you're nobody. And to become a doctor, you need to know this and that. And when they list all these things that await him, it becomes like a wall. Of course, his reaction is, well, that's probably not mine then. It sort of scares me and I'm nauseous now. But when a child really wants something, he's already on the path to it. Of course, this path is filled with a lot of difficult patches. And of course, he will need to be trained. He hasn't become a doctor yet. But he's already done something very important. He has desired it. He's not somewhere deep down anymore. He's reached a place where everything interesting starts, where you can see everything. We tell our children, out of the most noble intentions, do not argue with your peers. Don't get into a fight. Don't climb a tree. You'll fall. Don't touch a dog or a cat. You'll get infected. Don't sit by an open window. You'll catch a cold. Don't sit by a fire. You'll get burnt. Don't stand in the sun, you'll get burned. Don't drink tap water, your stomach will get sick. And on and on and on. Look at what kind of bricks, what kind of foundation we're laying. Everything that surrounds you, nature, animals, trees, sun, wind, water, people, objects. Everything is aggressive towards your life. Everything is dangerous for you. Childhood is a time of magic. You think there are no limits, there are no borders, and you can find anything you need in any direction. You believe in magic, you believe in yourself, and this kind of state should often be remembered. Because in life, as we grow older, unfortunately, we begin to believe critics. We start to believe the prosecutor that tells us, here is bad, this is not right, here you do not measure up. And when we go through the sea of a comparison with someone, we begin to lose ourselves and start playing someone else's games.
attempts to be like someone else who is not you. When did we forget our childhood dream? How did we miss that moment? What happened to us on that day, or in that hour? Or maybe nothing happened. Maybe to dream is the prerogative of childhood, and later you don't need it. Time demands I live my life, looking back in dread. Only trust the proven facts, not the dreams you bred. Formulas, not fairy tales, will keep the truth prevailing. Let machines, not wind and stars, direct your naval sailing. Value of dream is such. When people leave their chaotic lives without the global vector, they live from one payslip to the next, or from one home to work, or from one birthday to the other. In some kind of short stages, get up in the morning, and today it's this, this and that, and tomorrow we'll see. And there is no global plan for life, but not a plan as a plan, but something like a vector, something to orient you with that is absent. Recently I posted this on Twitter. Imagine, yesterday I met a man who doesn't have a dream. Naturally, there were loads of comments to this, as this is quite a provocative statement. But in reality, 90% of people don't have a dream. What they have are desires or ideas about their own well-being. But those are not a dream. To say that any dream comes to us with sufficient resources for its implementation, which I repeat quite frequently, one needs to understand what a dream is and what those resources are and how the dream's materialization is manifested. A dream is something that moves you forward in life. To turn this engine on is very important to visualize what it is and where. Even if I can't even imagine it, or which I can't even describe, when the something starts to happen inside of me or maybe outside of me, then something turns on, like a little engine. Or maybe you can say that it's the light that begins to move, or some new opportunities, or something else. It gives you strength to get up and start doing something, even when I don't know what to do, or can't, or think that I surely won't be able to. Or when I see when there are many against me, or something else. For me, a dream is something that moves me forward when I see that it's impossible. When you talk about a dream, if you don't know its particulars, it's vague. For example, if people dream of world peace, it's a very abstract dream that has nothing to do with life, and that splits the world in two. A dream world and a horrible reality from which I run into my dream world can help be a dream. If you are healthy, no, but if you are sick, then maybe. And this is a dream of many. What do I dream of? World peace? Can a dream be that? Can a dream be about a nice house? If your goal is to build a city, but you dream of a house for yourself, you can probably see the disproportion. If you're building a city, then in any case, you'd have a house there. The dictionary of Dal has the following definition of a dream. Fantasy, game of thoughts, to play, to imagine that which does not exist in the present, to think of the unrealizable. Vazmer writes in his dictionary that the folk definition of a dream is this. Illusion, ghost, apparition, vision. It's a good thing Ozhikov appears to be down to earth and specific. In his dictionary, a dream is defined as subject of desires, aspirations, so it looks like you can call anything a dream. 
What is a dream? A dream is the same state as happiness, a state upon examining which we find colors, details and shapes. For me, for example, a dream is not talking about things relevant to it, but a certain state, a state in which a person dreams. A dream is something bigger that happens beyond the limits of my conscious perception and ability to think. Therefore, strangely, but sometimes even for me it's difficult to dream, and for others too. Ideally, when your intention is filled with your desire, when your desire approximates you to your goal, because a goal is the biggest and brightest manifestation of the sum of your desires. That goal approximates you to your dream. The dream is vastly different from your goals, and goals are vastly different from your desires. And one of the biggest problems in the construction of one's destiny is that desires are spread around the perimeter. Goals are in different corners, talking geometrically, and there's no dream at all. In a reflex existence, this is exactly what happens. Ideally, this is how everything should be. Your desires are lined up in one line pointing towards your goals, and your goals lined up in one line should point to your dream. The whole path from your desires to your biggest goals is the movement towards your dream. The task is simple. Convert a dream into a goal. And everyone is capable of reaching a goal. Therefore, to transfer a dream into a goal, you must first create a vision. For example, what kind of a house do you want? Then relying on that picture, you make a decision that you will realize. It would be good to formulate this decision and write it down, or to declare. And it must be formulated with specifics to make it easier to measure. Such and such a house, in such and such a place, at such and such a time. There must be a date set. For certainty, you can construct a plan. How do you see possibility of realizing this decision? But it is nevertheless very important that you are not very strongly tied to the plan. When you see that your life and your plan are going in different directions, you should follow your life and not the plan. This is when you can imagine the dream as something specific and convert it into a goal. Try and set out some directions. I think there are eight major directions and try to set goals in these directions. And what you'll have can be classified by two things. Firstly, it grabs you, guides you, drags you, and secondly, you all of a sudden feel a very tough resistance against it. No, far be it from me. Both of these are symptoms of very vivid feelings and powerful energy. Because you feel this energy, there's something powerful behind you. And if these feelings overflow, doesn't matter whether they propel you into the positive or negative, then it makes sense to think and search in that direction. It's absolutely normal that when a person realizes a dream of another level, overcoming the hurdles we talked about, he loses energy. And at some stage, all the energy they had towards this runs out. Anyone moving towards a complex and important goal knows this stage. This is where doubts appear, thoughts of whether you should have gotten involved at all, or should move on any further at all. Is it worth moving on, as the outlay is this much, but there are no results yet, and it's not clear yet. These doubts, they spring up because the initial energy put into place for the implementation of this has run out. There is only one way here. You must rediscover the value of what it is you've been working towards.
The reason behind it, and this inspiration that was there initially, it comes back. And because an injection of additional energy, relying on which you can resume the movement, and it often so happens that after this moment, the moment of realization or completion is nearer. No wonder, they say, defeat comes a step before victory. This moment is very important. It's like the last test. Are you ready or not? And if you remember the why and the inspiration, it comes back, your strength is renewed, and then you make this last, or maybe not, effort. That's the key that allows you to overcome. Remember what you are doing this for, not a new car or a little house in Italy, but what hides behind this the reason for it, then you'll get the bonus and will be able to realize yourself. I could tell anyone, educated or not, honestly, exactly and very frankly in one phrase. But this phrase will not be convincing if you do not bring a set of arguments, different in their meaning. For example, to a scientist, I must explain it using the wave system or holographic model to understand how everything interacts. But in reality, everything is very simple. Think clearly and responsibly. That's the phrase I could state. If you think clearly and responsibly, then the whole world around you is transformed. It assumes those shapes, properties and qualities that are of interest to you. Where there is a dream and a person starts moving towards this dream, at some point an inner voice may say, this is not for me, I don't need this, or this doesn't suit me, this was imposed on me. When I have moments like this, I nevertheless choose to realize that dream. I think it doesn't matter, is it mine or not? As there was a moment at some point when I chose to realize this exact dream. What is more important? What has a higher priority? What should take precedence? What should be first? Every person must determine this for themselves. But they must determine this once, because others' dreams will be forced upon them. Others' goals, others' values, even others' desires. And they become a decoration, an instrument or an ingredient of others' desires, goals or dreams. If this position suits you, there's nothing bad about that. But if that doesn't suit you, you should declare to the world, the universe, neighbors, family, what you want, why you want it, what your goals are, and what is your magic dream. To see what you're doing in life, trying to keep track of it, and if you have some dream, and every day you do even the slightest thing for it, or about it, then it's yours. Then you're moving and everything is good. It's what I do myself and I recommend it to my friends. It often happens that something was declared, but nothing is done. Then it's quite possible that it's a goal that was imposed on you. Possibly by peer pressure. It seems important, but that's not for you. There is a theory of one minute that was proposed by a Japanese man in light of the fact that we've become so terribly lazy. It goes like this. Spend one minute today on yourself. Do it consciously and effectively. If you will spend 100% of every minute on yourself, you will see such results in a month, in a year, in five years, that will simply astonish you. We say, how can it be just one minute? We spend six, eight, twelve, twenty-four hours on ourselves. No, we spend them on mirrors, to seem in a certain way, to think about the unrealizable, and we tell ourselves that it's impossible to achieve. Oh, it's unattainable. Let me think about it. 
What's the point? You need to think about what you want to make it real. And if you truly want it, then you'll make it happen. Then you'll want to find out how. And having understood how, you would understand what resources, instruments and sequence you'll need. In what time, with whom, what for and why. Impossible things do not exist. It's a very simple and banal thing. The simpler it is, the more doubtful it seems. When a person starts moving and living, incarnating their dream, their life starts to change, because the state in which they dream starts pervading every area of their life, fill their life with color, and they begin to dedicate various aspects of their life to their dream. It's not like they are focused on the dream from 10 to 12, but from 12 doing some other things. But everything that a person is doing, they start to dedicate to that dream. And by doing so, this begins to connect them with the dream and this state. A different quality of living begins to penetrate into all areas of their life. There's a famous story that I like very much. One professor showed his students a jar, which he started filling with pebbles, till there was no more space. Then he asked the students if the jar was full, and they agreed that it was. Then he took some smaller stones and put some in, and after shaking the jar, they filled the smaller spaces between the bigger pebbles, and quite a large number was able to fit in. Then he asked the students, you see now, now it's definitely full, isn't it? They agreed. Then he took some sand and filled the jar to the top. Again, a hefty amount went in. He asked again, do you think it's definitely full now? Then he took two cans of beer and poured them in. Then he said, this is an illustration of how you should build your life. Fill your life with most important things at first. Less important things will filter true and find their place. There are also things you do that, like the sand, will fill the remaining empty spaces. What about the beer? The beer illustrates that no matter how busy you are, you can always find the time to have a couple of pints with your friends. There are recipes, there are advices, wise people, and of course there is a dream. Goals are determined, steps and tasks are outlined, intentions are directed in the right way, but something doesn't let go, holds on to you, stalls you, fear, it is fear, there are all kinds of fears, real or made up, fear is our enemy, or is fear our helper. A man, as a biological being, cannot avoid fear. Fear is a defense reaction. If we didn't fear, we'd perish. We'd jump from the 20th floor. Where there is a fear, a biological reaction occurs in the body. Ductless glands secrete various hormones, which produce a chemical reaction, which in turn allows us to do something. Roughly speaking, there is energy, strength and possibilities internally within your body, which are activated only by fear. There is a fear of a different type that has nothing to do with the biological function. It's rather a social type, arising from the social roles we play. It's a fear of looking bad, fear that you may not be able for something, fear of loneliness, and all these fears naturally impede goals, results and opportunities. Many people run from their fears and seek how not to be afraid, to hear, to understand, to see, to grasp, to stop being afraid. Perhaps my answer will sound unexpected. Be afraid. As long as you fear, you are alive. At a certain stage of development, fear starts to limit a person, and they can't create anymore, can't make something new, innovate can't make a breakthrough in their life, neither in their life nor in anyone else's around them. 
and all because this fear is limiting them. And that is when fear becomes a hindrance, and the person must live through this fear to see that it's not real. My father taught me, when you have had more than enough, you need to tackle fear. Once my kayak overturned, I lost the oar and for 20 minutes could not flip over. My knee gave in and I couldn't get back up. And after I was helped up, my dad said to me, let's go to the track. I have no fear of water. I had all kinds of fears. I was afraid of heights, depth, speed, darkness, hooligans, and so on. And so I obtained appropriate qualifications in all these areas. It's important to always be afraid to work. For instance, if I'm afraid of too much work, then the kind of work that comes to me is the type that I have no idea how to handle and manage this kind of volume of work. And it gets bigger and bigger. And when I work, I have the opportunity to do something for others and myself and for the world, and not just for the people. And I think I can say that the secret of my success and the miracles that happened in my life is to face fear, to rejoice when you're afraid, to be happy when there are these types of emotions, the trembling, when it seems that you're losing ground beneath your feet, the whole world is against you, and definitely nothing will work. In such a time, you need to feel that luck comes to do something that really matters. Which is why I'll say, be afraid, face your fears, and everything will work for you. I have all fears, all the normal human fears, from biological to fear of looking bad and fear of death. All fears are there. To gain weight. Yes, strangely enough, also to gain weight. It's important to understand what it is you fear. Fear of dependence is fear of loss. Someone fears losing their family, someone fears losing money, someone to lose their life, someone maybe even fears losing freedom. If a person is afraid to lose something, if you remember the last time you feared losing something, everyone says that's precisely what you've lost. If you fear losing money, pretty soon you somehow do lose it. If you're afraid to lose your family, I can tell you right away that you'll lose them if you have such a fear. For example, I'm afraid to look bad in someone's eyes, so I don't argue with my boss. It often happens that when a person overcomes this fear, they go and start arguing with their boss. Of course, not just for the sake of argument, but disagreeing constructively and with proof, to ensure he hears something important you have to say. And then your boss starts treating you better, starts respecting you, simply because he sees independent thinking. Of course, there are other examples, naturally. But the important thing is, when you break through that fear, you become less dependent on your boss and the situation and your fear. If you see the road is full of trouble, not an easy way there to impend, nothing will come to pass without a struggle. What is easy, then you'd understand. Only problems and difficulties move us towards the results. One granny used to go to church and pray, pray deliriously and cry over and over. When someone was able to make out what she was praying about and why she is accusing God of turning away from her, it was that for the last two to three years she had no problems. So she was saying, Lord, you've turned away from me. You don't want to help me, teach me, educate me. Why have you left me in silence and peace? Desires turning into dollar, clothing suffering in vain. Words will be reduced to tears and dreams, faint memories, ghosts. Lava hardens into stone, bronze face glory into shame. Shadows haunt all doubts and then woe reveals the most. 
A symptom of an obstacle being a trial is that once you overcome this obstacle, you gain energy. That energy is within you, in your eternal barrier that kept you from realization. When you overcome this energetic barrier, the energy is released, and that's when you feel an upsurge. That means that these obstacles are the trials for you. If you're heading in the wrong direction, then you'll have a feeling that you're getting stuck. You overcome one obstacle, but another one appears, and strength is spent. And it's as if you're getting stuck in these obstacles. Those kind of obstacles can mean that you're heading in the wrong direction. People feel unhappy as a rule because their understanding of life or expectations do not come to pass. And this kind of attitude that the world owes you, that life must like this, that you must have this, this and that, and that people around you must behave in this and that way towards you. This kind of expectation is the source of unhappiness, because the world doesn't know anything about your expectations and did not promise you that these will be fulfilled. So does that mean you dream of something that you are not happy with, what you have? Are you unhappy? Or is everything wrong? Or can you be happy and dream of more? One of my favorites, a guy walks and grumbles. Wife is a witch, kids are freaks, employees are thieves, and on this shoulder there's an angel going. Lord, why doesn't he ask for something else? I'm having to grant all of this. Happiness is an acute experience and way of life. Happiness is concept, it's an idea, and I think a state. Happiness is perception and feeling and not a possession. Happiness is connected with discovering, creating something new. Happiness has to do with a moment of experience. If something happened in your life, but you were asleep at the time, you can't say you were happy at that moment. We strive and say, I will have a house, a yacht, a loved one, a certain number of kids, citizenship of a certain country. I will be happy. Happiness does not come. And when you get these things, you maybe start to realize, albeit with a delay, that happiness is not in that. And that's not what you were dreaming about. But to change something is difficult, because one would never burn the castle they built themselves voluntarily. If you look back on your life and see when I was happy, often it's not the most pleasant moments that come to mind, but the brightest moments in life. It could be a moment, for example, when you were traveling and your boat flipped over and you went into the cold water and how you got out of it. And all of this, as part of your experience, is perceived as happiness, as a very sharp, poignant sensation in your life. Just for the laugh, or out of curiosity, you could try to compose a formula of happiness using various mathematical symbols and do up an equation happiness equals to me it would be happiness equals myself to the degrees of my abilities and the more abilities the more desires I have and the more dreams aspirations and anticipation the more happiness I have happiness is lived but perceived as happiness later it could be a joy of discovery creation or something and then a thought pops into your head, oh, I think I'm happy. And in that moment, happiness is over. Reflections began thinking about happiness. Happiness can be infectious. It can be passed on, not in an airborne way. And if the person is happy with themselves, with what they are like, with the possibilities, situations they live in, and then you really want to lean to them and be the same. Can parents be happy if your child is sick? 
I was that child and my kids also would sometimes get sick. And I understand that the only way to help is to be happy yourself without the outside help. Happy not because the child is sick, but because they exist. And because we have the resources for solutions and there are numerous possibilities and ways to help. If a person is happy, they are healthy and they are in the right universal state of understanding. If it's my destiny, for example, to get married or give birth to this particular child, to do this specific work or to meet these particular people and so on and so forth, then I will be moving in that direction of my destiny in any case. Whatever will be happening in this family, that will be my choice. Say, for instance, I got married. Say I married this particular guy. That is destiny. But what I will be doing with this person, in this marriage, within our family, that is a choice for me. For example, I can be constantly having rows, be unsatisfied or pout, or just go in for dramatics and get offended all the time, or maybe do the silent treatment for months. I got married to be happy. I said my vows about this at the registry office, for better or for worse, in happiness and in sadness. But if I allow myself to be silent for a month with my husband, just because I was offended at something, doesn't matter at what, that is my choice. I can choose to be unhappy in this family, or to be happy in this family. Can you live without a dream? Of course you can. One can live without music, one can live without poetry, without painting, without theater, without cinema, without ballet. One can live without rivers, fields and woods. One can just eat and drink and not think of what will be left behind. But everything that surrounds us is the embodiment of people's dreams, of people who could not live without a dream, to live without love. Someone reached the end, someone the point, someone barely made it to the threshold, someone dreams of knowing everything, someone of knowing nothing, and someone of knowing at least something. It's a well-known fact, we dream of what we don't have, and the range of dreams is very vast. Every dream has the right to exist, don't you agree? But no one questions this right, as dreams are not regulated by anyone or anything. There is only one danger. It happens that dreams come true, become reality. This movie is addressed to the people who, in life and dreams, want the good for themselves and other people. Miracles are not guaranteed, but they always happen. When a person becomes a wonder worker, one can't just make a miracle for the sake of another miracle. That can't happen. It must come from the heart. I call it love. You spend the same amount of energy on whatever you say. I love you, or I don't love you. But the end result is completely different. To me, love is not an experience. It's a decision. It's a choice. It's a direction. It's a readiness to feel. If I care for someone or about something, then I love this person or this place or this country. Love of the people. Love of your homeland is also very important to me. Throughout the years I realized how important it is to love your homeland. Where you were born, where you live, where you come from, where your ancestors stem from. That is very important. Every person has at least once in their life asked a question. What is the meaning of my life? What am I here for? It's very difficult to get an answer, because you don't really know who you are asking. It's said, everyone on earth has their mission. And what? Is that the answer to the most difficult question there is? How do you find out what your mission is? Mission is the most important inheritance of the generation. 
It's what your kids inherit, if it's successfully formulated, understood and taken up. Your dream determines the internal context of your mission. To find your mission through any dream, it's enough to imagine what the world where your dream came true would be like. And when I imagine this world, this picture inspires me. It fills me with energy and a different quality of being. I connect with the energy of that dream. And when I imagine myself in that world, where people feel like this, where they express themselves like this, in that moment, then the energy soaks in and I connect with it. And this change is the key, firstly to realize the dream, and secondly to connect with the mission, not with a text, but energy. And then I can connect with this vision, then maybe this is my designation, my mission. And then I'll be able to formulate my mission based on that dream. For example, my mission is to inspire people to flourish, discover their splendor, and manifesting this splendor in the world around them, to discover the beauty and splendor of this world. This is how through the dream we move on to formulating the mission, connecting with the mission as energy. Every adult's task, in my opinion, is to become a wonder worker, to make someone else's dream come true, or help someone to realize their own dream, or something else, as this is a miracle. It's important that the mission be magical for the world, for the people. The mission is not for yourself, it's what you leave behind. The mission is unreachable, it's a direction of movement. And often your mission can be formed or formulated only by your kids or grandkids after you are gone. In one phrase, our grandfather dreamt, or moved towards this goal, or made something happen. The idea in the Torah that God created earth unfinished is very appealing to me, that every one of us comes to add on creating in accordance with his vision that we are all co-creators. And I believe that the mission is your part of adding on to that creation, that you will contribute to the end result. How many mysteries and adventures, destinies, feelings and pleasures there are Choose any time, open any door, come in, own, and believe. I dreamt of becoming a psychologist, working with people, working with the masses. I wanted to be a writer. My dream was to become a doctor. I remember in Kresh that they told us to draw what we wanted to become. And I wanted to sell ice cream, but I drew a seaman, as I knew I should be drawing that, as it was more acceptable. As a kid, I dreamt of traveling around the world. I dreamt of flying into space on a super fast rocket when I was little. My dream was to have a dog. I dreamt of a bicycle, motorbike. I really wanted to play music. I wanted to be a musician, dreamt of being a musician. I dreamt of becoming an opera singer. I wanted to become what I am now. 